Good morning, everyone. As a lot of you know, Little Angels has two ranches. We have one in San Diego and one in New Hampshire. Today is March 20th, and San Diego has just been asked to shelter in place. This means that nobody's going nowhere. With the coronavirus pandemic, there's a lot of uncertainty in our times, but we all have two choices. We can choose to be miserable or we can choose to be happy. Personally, I'm always gonna choose to be happy. I'm gonna look to find the joy in life. And today I thought I would give you a day in the life of the director of Little Angel Service Dogs during the coronavirus outbreak. And fortunately for me, I live at a dog kennel. That's right. So when I shelter in place, I get to spend my whole day with dogs. My first task for the morning is to let out the puppies. You see that sign right there, employees only? I am one, so I get to go say good morning, puppies. Hey guys. Happy March 20th. We get to shelter and play. You wanna come out? Woohoo! we get to shelter and play. <laughs> Super fun. Good morning. Well, it looks like our porta potty is still getting emptied. I would consider that essential business. I'm pretty excited about my day. You see, usually I'm a paper pusher, which means that I do a lot of administrative things and I oversee staff. I do get to have some phone calls. That can be fun for phone consultations. But today, I get to play with dogs like all day long. And aren't these like the most fabulous kennel maintenance shoes? If you don't think they're cute, you can't argue that they are not appropriate. So my schedule for today is maintenance, which involves doggy room service, feeding, medications, training, poop scooping for sure. There's gonna be lots of that and then some more training. When normally my life is pretty much emails, phone calls, meetings, emails, phone calls, meetings. Little Angel Service Dogs, this is Katie, may I help you? Oh yeah, sure, no problem. I have your application here right in front of me. Sure. Yeah, so you've been thinking about getting a service dog for about two years. In that period of time, what are the options that you've considered? It's going to be a good day. <laughs> so I have these earrings. They're super cute. Darlene got them for me. I believe it was because of a fundraiser that we had. But right now I'm second guessing the intelligence of wearing earrings into a dog kennel. Needless to say, I decided not to wear the earrings. I am choosing my ears. I'm gonna keep those. Good morning, chicken. That's Nora. This is Nelly. I know they aren't dogs, but they're really good at socializing them. Oh, you guys are so cute. Great weed eaters. No need to knock today. No one's in there. Okay, well, some people were in here. Good morning. This is Bob. He is a feral cat that we rescued. So the shelter has this really neat program called a barn cat program. And this is where feral cats are brought in and they can't just release them back out into the public. And so they neuter them. They cut the little tip of their ear right there to let everyone know that this cat has been spayed or neutered and then they adopt them out to uh, homes or businesses where they promise to take care of the animals and give them veterinary care and feed them give them nice warm places to stay 
And that way they are not euthanized. I mean, how horrible would that be? Oh, poor little Bob. Can you imagine? So now he lives with us and he's a mouser and he helps to keep down the rodent population in our kennel, which is very important. He works way better than a trap. We cannot imagine our lives without Bob. Rescue a pet today. So here's all of our employee documentation. We've got bracing harnesses galorious. We've got crate after crate after crate. It just goes on and on. Never know when you're going to need to practice with a wheelchair. Well, unless you work here and then it's every day. <laughs> Here we have our feeding board. It tells me what dogs need to be fed in the morning, where the dogs are, it tells me about medications. We've got our grooming area, and we've got more shampoo than we know what to do with. Although that's probably only gonna last a month. Coffee, coffee. I might need that by the end of the day. Oh, hey. And I wanted to share this beautiful piece of artwork. The Resnick family made this for us, and look at, there's so many little pieces. It took them months to make this. It's so beautiful. And we still are changing lives one dog at a time. I know some people might be worried right now about dogs not getting training, but the beauty of our facilities is that they're designed with people living on site. So our New Hampshire facility, they have their trainers living with them. And I've been training service dogs for 20 years. So I think it's safe to say the dogs are still receiving their training. Oh, Jared, nice new handle, thanks. Let's see. Good morning. Hi. You want to have some training today? You want to go play in the field? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Good boy. Wait. Wait. Good boy. You want to go play? Go play. He runs like a jackrabbit. That's a happy dog. Playtime is really essential for our dogs. We do have to kennel them as a necessity, but we try to have them out as often as possible. Buster's story is so cool. He's one of those little guys that someone took to the shelter thinking maybe he couldn't be trained or they just didn't have the time for him. He's really special. He went through a lot of temperament testing with us and then he went to one of our prison programs and he was just adored by our inmate trainers for a very long time. And then he came back to our facility. We're still working with him, but he's gonna make an awesome service dog for someone someday. Sometimes people wonder, well, what can a little dog do for someone that's disabled? Well, certainly they can't open heavy doors. They can't lift heavy things. They can't guide the blind, but they can certainly alert to seizures. They can alert to diabetes. They can be a psychiatric service dog if that's something that someone is comfortable with. They can do a lot of awesome things. We love our little dogs. They're so cute. Someone thought that this food bowl was a bedpan. Kennel maintenance is super glorious work. Right here, come on. Wait, good girl. Good. Wait. Girl. Good girl, heel. Good girl, Bella. Good girl, Bella, sit. Good girl, down, stay. Bella is actually a golden doodle. You can't tell though, she looks just like an English cream golden retriever, except for her nose is just slightly more narrow and elongated. You're such a pretty girl, huh? She is doing a really good down stay. Aren't you? Let's see if she stays when I leave the room. 
Stay. Good girl. Oh, no, 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 no. Down. Good girl. Yes, you're being a good girl. Yes, you're a good girl. Stay. Hey, Jerry. Wait. Is it okay for me to say, I love this dog? This is Jerry. Hey, Jerry, aren't you gorgeous? Aren't you gorgeous? You wanna come play, Jerry? I love, love, love Jerry. Love, love, love him. This dog is gorgeous. Gorgeous! The thing about dogs is that they have this ability to live in the moment. They're not worried about the future. If they've got joy right now, they don't feel bad about experiencing it. And that would be my hope for all of us during this time. Granted, I know that I'm lucky because I'm getting shut in at a kennel, but each of us can find a way to find that joy. When I am not being a dog trainer and an administrator and a director, I write fiction novels, and that's a great way for me to escape. Maybe you want to do a Netflix binge or maybe you want to get a hold of a good book. What a great way to escape and just to relieve some of that stress of what the future holds. And don't feel guilty about experiencing joy right where you're at. This is my German Shepherd Sarai. Normally she's only out when it's not business hours, but Business hours are pretty gray right now, so she's taking advantage. Just guarding the perimeter. Hey guys. What you doing? We get a lot of questions about what our kennels look like. This is an indoor space. I'll show you in there in just a minute. But this is just an example of it. We have a lot of vinyl fencing. We only have chain link fencing on the very backs of the kennels to allow for good airflow. Uh, most every kennel, well, I'll just say actually every kennel is covered by oak trees that are hundreds of years old. Uh, and a nice benefit too of the chain link is that they have the view behind the kennels of these beautiful forested areas and the vinyl fencing helps to keep down the noise because the barking just reverberates off of that and comes back in to the creek. So none of our dogs are locked inside during the day with the exception of crating. If we're crate training a dog, they might be in there for a few hours, but they all have access to the outdoors. And then each of them have an indoor space that they can go into if it's raining or whatnot. We've got these industrial heaters that are incredible and they're set to turn on every night to keep them warm. Puppies. So puppies too, they have access to the indoor area that's heated. We've got pools out here which are only used in the summertime. In the summertime. Hi. You're so cute. Puppies want to go on a walk? Let's go. So normally I have a nanny that comes and watches my boys for me while I'm doing little angels work. <laughs> and I got to tell you, she is so fabulous. But she's sheltering in place too now, so my boys are stuck with me. Go figure. They don't seem to mind. Sit. Good 
girl. That's a good sit. He really, really loves being fat. Oh. Oh <laughs> uh, man, I just got it. No, what I got him! Uh, no, 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 no! Oh, tell her she's a good girl for sitting. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You want to sit too? Sit. 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 Good girl. Good sit. Down. Down. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Good girl. You guys want to go inside and do some homeschool? Nope. <laughs> so a lot of you are asking what you can do in the meantime. First of all, and most importantly, it's going to be to stay positive and stay healthy. And if you can, if you have to go out to get groceries and you're doing those necessary errands, ask a neighbor if you can help them out. And after that, think about your charities and your churches. There are still starving children in the world. They still need your support and nonprofits are the first ones that are forgotten when the world is going through a catastrophe like this. Uh, but yeah, the kids need to eat, the dogs need to eat. So still support your local charities and uh, I'll see you on the other side.